Hey, what's up, guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sotucci, and we are flying out to our spot. Well, it looks like we're flying out to our spot. This is pretty cool. Um, so I've got the orange lens film covering our underwater cameras. So a good buddy of mine is taking us out on his boat to go try out for some big old black drum. And it's a spot that you'll have seen where the water was kind of brownish when an aircraft flew over and scared away the big black drum before he did take the big blue crab for bait. So we're actually heading back there, but the water is a little more greener than what we originally had it, but it is something that we got to do. We got to go out there and test and um, see what we can work out. So we're going to go ahead and get that done. Got a, got a lot of stress on my mind It's a nice day to go Yeah, I got a line I'm a caller The whole team And to all my new subscribers to the channel Thank you very much for hitting that subscribe button And turning on your notifications If y'all are watching the channel And have not subscribed Please hit that subscribe button And turn on your notifications Because we got a ton more knowledge A lot more testing And we are learning. We are learning everything that we can above water and underwater on how things work. And these underwater camera footages are really helping us out. Now, granted, I have to admit I've been going through so much footage from the underwater cameras, you know, testing it and checking it out and seeing what I can see. And a lot of it I have not posted because of the issue of the green light. Um, or the sunlight putting out too much uh, glare on the underwater and we can't get good crystal clear photo or images that we're looking for. So this is part of the learning curve that we are doing is trying this out and we're gonna see what ends up happening with all the testing that we're doing. So it is, uh, like I said, there's always something to look at and check out and learn from, but that's only when it happens that something is in there or not in there because you got to look at it too just because there's not any catches happening it is also backing up the idea that the fish just aren't there you know a lot of people say oh you didn't catch anything well yeah that that means the fish weren't there they literally aren't there you know we used to always assume or guess that the fish weren't there or the other thing was that they were in lock jaw settings meaning that they didn't want to eat anything you would throw at them now, the only time they were in lockjaw that we can prove that was when the water was super clear and they just didn't want anything we threw at them. So that there is something that we can prove. I mean, we've seen it, but I want to catch it on camera. I want to see where we actually can get all that footage and or, you know, find out if they really are doing either or. <laughs> what I really want to catch, too, is how the drums sound underwater. Will the camera pick it up? I'm betting it will because it will hear or feel the shakes from when the fish come up and eat our bait and mess with our bait and stuff like that. But it's going to, it's really testing me. It really is. So I'm willing to go, go to the deep for my YouTubers as long as y'all are staying proactive with the channel and commenting. And again, keep it all in a positive manner. We do have kids on the channel too. And we're all here for support knowledge and sharing guys so stay tuned as we continue on with it all right guys and another food for thought for y'all if y'all are from the corpus christi area or coming to the area with your boats the intercoastal waterway here has it extended their no wake zone even further and uh, it's coming very soon where they're actually going to start sighting people they're giving a little leeway of a window for people to get used to that since it hasn't been done um, but that window is closing very quickly guys but in the meantime still you know show some regard for other boaters that are parked up in these areas because there's a couple of restaurants that are there where people are allowed to drive up their boat get off eat and then drive away on their boat and if you're coming through you know putting out a big old wake a lot of these boats are getting damaged because of the wake you're putting out so just food for thought guys and the reason why i wanted to also show the trip out there and all of this is because part of our teach a man to fish series as well 
is teaching you all the things behind the scenes of all these great catches that you do see is put out. You know, the time, the effort, the patience, you know, the casting, the rebating. And you'll find out, guys, when you really do go fishing, you know, it ain't always 100% catching. You know, sometimes it is fishing. It is fishing for the knowledge and finding out where they're at, what they're biting on. All right, so we've made it to location. Now we're gonna start rigging up and uh, I'll be using the three-way long Jack Cravel leaders, the three-way long big black drum leaders, as well as the double drop drum leaders. And I've got blue crap that I've gotten from Paul Seafood. Oh, they are nice. Check these out, nerds. Oh yeah, that's some good looking bait right there. And I do have to admit, Growing up as a kid, I would have never dreamt about using crab this big for bait. But I've also learned too, for big bait, you get big fish. But it also depends on the season. Because during the winter time, I like to use real small baits for my shark. But during the winter or during the summer time, I will use big baits for shark. And then small, smaller baits, you know, I guess for the drum season. Yeah, um, I'll be using whole shrimps and later during the winter, I'll start using microscopic baits, you know, quarter, quarter inch pieces of fish bite and like a quarter of a piece of shrimp and stuff like that to catch decent size, big black drum, uh, keeper size reds and slot drum and stuff like that. And also too, you can see me, I'm already pulling out the underwater camera and I'm double checking it cause I want the green light on. I want to make sure that it is working. But I've noticed that I've been having a little trouble to get it to switch on. But I am working on it. And once it's on, I'll get it set up, closed up, baited up, and cast it out.
All right, guys, so you see I'm rigging up the rods. I've got two underwater cameras that I'm setting out there because I was actually able to do two of them before I left the shop. Well, you can see it's overcast, and it's supposed to be clearing up, but we'll see what ends up happening with that. But through this, I'm teaching the other guys that are on the boat, you know, how I'm rigging up my baits for the big shark fish or big black drum fishing, how I'm using the crab, the sea lights, and even crawfish, um, fish bites, and you know just passing on the knowledge because that's what it's about so in doing that freaking i am uh getting what i need to do with the underwater cameras by getting them out there with the new lens on them and we're gonna see what we can see but i wanted to show y'all what it looks above the water that way y'all can see what it looks like under the water and how it all plays into effect so for me, it's really seeing, I know I was gonna be fishing in a deep area and with it being overcast like that, I went ahead and turned on the underwater light, like I said in the uh, beginning of the video, because I wanna see how the green and the orange are gonna come together and or not come together in this deep water. We already know that normally it was in a brown, brownish looking spot uh, before, but oh, we just won't know. And as you can see, the skies are clearing up. It's starting to break apart, the uh, cloud cover. So I'm wondering how this is gonna look for our underwater footage as the cameras have about an hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes with the light on underwater in one shot. So that's normally what I try to do. Sometimes I try to bring them up every 30 minutes just to check it out and to also give it a little time gap of when I do uh, pull it in change bait check bait and see how everything is going so that's what i'm doing occasionally um i have had to re-rig one of them because something on the bottom cut me off i went and set the hook and it came undone um but we'll see what's going on and like i said i'll keep putting them out there definitely looking for the knowledge and you can definitely see the cloud cover is really really starting to come through or clear out so that hopefully we get some real clear underwater footage but i don't know yet i don't see a real big current i'm actually using pyramid weights here where i normally throw spiders but i'm throwing pyramids and they're actually holding pretty well so that's telling me a lot of good things that there's not a real bad current down there which means we may not see a whole bunch of debris but again i won't know until i actually get the camera footage back and we can go from there
the radio. <clears throat> TV. <laughs> that really ruined your video right now. I'm like, hey, remember, remember that time you took that homeless wiener in your butt? came with a couple of little suckers on them. I think it was B. Joe one day he put one on his leg. <laughs> Oh, that's where the remoras were. Yeah, the remoras were there. It's a fish like that. Even right here on the tail end, right here. You see all that redness? They just got worms. Nice little fish. Oh, we should have, should have measured them on the, on the stick there. But. 